Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I'm the high school pastor here at FaithBridge. And I am joined by Dan Slagle, who just gave an incredible sermon on overcoming prejudice, which is actually the last sermon of the next series. And Dan, thanks so much for being here thanks with us. Me. And thank yeah. you for your incredibly powerful and, and timely sermon on overcoming prejudice. And the first question that we had um, that actually came in uh, was, what is a Christian's action when they are the ones being discriminated against. This particular uh, person had tattoos and feels like she was being discriminated against because of the way she looks with her tattoos. So how should a Christian respond when they feel discriminated against? Okay, so this is sort of a reversal of, of what we were talking about, yeah. Um, well, several thoughts come to mind. Um, first, uh, I think about Jesus uh, saying that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Yeah. I think that would be step number one, that we pray for whoever is doing us harm. I think God can work in and through those prayers, not mm -hmm. only to change that person, but also to reveal things to us about ourselves that perhaps we're blind to. Um, that leads to suggestion number two, which would be to earnestly search our own hearts and try to discern where am I prejudicial? Mm. And how can that self-knowledge help me understand this person and why maybe they are behaving this way toward me? And then third, if it were possible, I would suggest having a conversation with this individual and not in a threatening or pouty sort of way, but simply sitting down like you and I are mm -hmm. and saying, uh, I wish you would help me understand something here. Uh, I've observed that you don't particularly care for my tattoos. It seems to really rub you the wrong way. Can you help me understand why that is so difficult for you? Uh, and see if a face-to-face -face conversation can't bring just a little bit closer to uh, a more peaceable relationship. Absolutely. And going back to what you had said uh, just now and even in your sermon, you said that almost all of us deal with some kind of prejudice in our lives. Right. Uh, we all have some form of prejudice. So how can we identify our own prejudice if it's not outwardly apparent? Okay. Um, well, again, uh, I think first step would be to, to pray mm. and to ask God for discernment, ask Him for wisdom, uh, self-understanding. He really has a remarkable way of putting his finger on the things that are displeasing to him. But beyond that, I would encourage someone to uh, take their own pulse, their own prejudicial pulse. Mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to yourself and notice what, what sort of situations elicit a response from me. Uh, are there certain news stories that, that make me angry? Uh, are there certain people groups that I, I find myself feeling uh, distrustful toward mm. or uh, suspicious of? Um, are there certain kinds of jokes and things that mm. I either tell or I laugh at? You know, a lot of it is just looking in the mirror and observing with a more focused sort of vision. Yeah, I, I do get angry about that. Mm. I, I do feel a visceral response to this people group. Uh, I think between prayer and paying attention to oneself, y you can probably discern pretty quickly where it is. Absolutely, and I would imagine that's gonna take quite a bit of honesty on your part as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah. To be able to identify those things. Yeah. And this last question was uh, another one that was sent in to us. And uh, she was asking, can we become so accepting that we end up compromising our witness as Christians? Well, uh, I think uh, we have to be careful about how we use a word like accept. Mm. I think a more appropriate word in the context of my sermon is uh, not the degree to which we accept, but the degree to which we love. I using Jesus as our role model. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was known to hang out with drunkards, prostitutes, thieves, I mean, the lowest of the low, and yet, 
uh, his time with them was not spent condoning their behavior, mm -hmm. certainly not becoming like them, but loving them mm -hmm. in spite of their behavior. And I think it's certainly possible for us to love someone else and not be condoning of their behavior. Um, one word of caution I suppose I would give is, let, let's say that uh, there is a, a particular people group who engages in, you know, let's just say drinking. And that's been a struggle for you in the past. Right. Well, I probably wouldn't go and hang out at the bar, you know. Yeah, the sense. temptation's going to be too great right. there. But, uh, you know, all things being equal, putting that aside, it is perfectly possible, and I would say even uh, expected, mm -hmm. that as followers of Christ, we would move into this world not to condone it, not to approve of it, but rather to love it and hopefully love it in a redemptive sort of way that points people toward Jesus. Absolutely. Well, thank you again so much uh, yeah. for that incredible sermon. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.